What's going on, fight fans? This is Sean with BoxingSocialist.com here with Cornelius K9 Budget, the IBF champion. How's it going, K9? Oh, 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 oh. The bug is still loud and the fight is vicious. So, 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 tell us, man. Sean, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So, tell me, man. So, so, what, what's been going on, man, since you beat up Carlos Molina, took the belt, went down to Mexico, took the belt back, right back in the right for hands owner. So what's been going on since then? What you been up to? Man, I've been actually, I've been working on my promotion. You know, I uh, got my K-9 Boxing World promotion. And i um, just been trying to work on, you know, dates and trying to work on sponsorship and trying to work on what you know, what we're going to fight on and just from everything, man, from everything. All right, so yeah. with, with your K-9 promotions, are you looking to put on some cars up, up in your area, in the Detroit area? Everywhere. You know, my it, my, my uh, promotion is called K-9 Boxing Global Promotions. You know, we promoted the fight. We co-promoted the fight with Warrior Boxing in Cancun, Mexico, when I fought Carlos Molina. You know that? No, 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 I didn't. I know you were, I knew you had your promotions coming, but I didn't know you co-promoted it, though. Yeah, co-promoted it for real. So, we got sponsorship. We... Right. Brought in foreign TV, UK, and everything. Yeah, I actually, actually, Lord, just not get another check, in um, in my account, like what about three, four days ago. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, so when yeah. that stuff gets ta- <laughs> when it gets tallied up, man, they cut, they keep cutting them checks, sending it to you. Exactly. Exactly. Oh man, so it's like having having your same on time. <laughs> yeah, it's like having yeah. having your having your uh promotion company is the way to go. Man, listen. Two checks is better than one. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, let me ask you, yeah, K nine. So, 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 so yeah. we've heard this. So before we know, you talked about fighting Canelo, except Canelo uh-huh. is Canelo now is fighting James Kirkland. Um, exactly. You know, we talked about Floyd Mayweather, but you know he got his sight set on the highest pay of his life fighting Manny Pacquiao. And then yeah, um, yeah, you I got De- you yeah. got Demetrius Andre who has the other belt, but um, yeah. it seemed like he's trying to bring Laura in to try to fight Laura for his belt. So who's who's out there that you, what do you want to do next? What's next? I mean, it's like these other guys are occupied. So since you can't obviously fight for a title belt right now, since they're fighting other people, what do you want next for your career? Uh, I, I know you don't you know, want to sit I, out. I know you said you want to fight as much as you can. You didn't really want to sit out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Bible man, and you a Bible man. Uh-huh. God, they say that don't let your left hand, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is saying, and we know that <laughs> everybody is listening, right? Right, right, right. That's, <laughs> That's true. Right, but uh, I'm working. Listen, I'm me and my team. We working on some real big shine, and okay. once, once it's actually signed, sealed, and delivered, man, we gonna chop it up. But I'm working on some big things. You know, it's a lot okay. of things out there floating around. You hear the right. names, you hear the codos talking. You know, you hear, you know, it, it's a lot of people out here, man. You know, Bradley, that's a big fight. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, guys out here, you'd be surprised some of the people that are going to reach out and, and try to connect, connect for, connect, what they say, connect the dots. Right. Uh, Dr. Uh, T's and connect the T's. I never, right. never could get that right, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Cross your T's, dot your ass. Yeah, them guys from overseas, they just keep, you know, keep reaching out to my team, trying to, you know, throw numbers at us, but, you know. We ain't budging because they ain't talking right. They they barking, but they ain't biting nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's just it, you, you know what? There's a lot of stuff going on, huh? You know, can can I break down your team? So you have the K Nine Boxing Global uh, Promotion Company. So tell us exactly who is your team? What's on your team? Oh man, um, my manager Shawana Bundridge, SB mm-hmm. Promotions. Um, she's actually in the process of signing a few fighters too. Um, other okay. than me. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have, we have, um, we have Bill Waller. We call it, better known as Dollar Bill. He, um, he, he's the COO of the company and actually he runs the company because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so far always, I'm always in the ring. So it's like, you know, hard to do both things, but I'm a CEO of the company. We mm-hmm. have, um, Sims. We have Mayor Sims, who's actually a mayor of, okay. um, uh, of a city, yeah, oh, former wow. mayor. Uh, so you know, we have, we have, man, we have, we have. I mean, all nationalities is working with us. We got, we got, you know, we got Jews, we got all, uh, we got African Americans, we got white people, we got black people. You know, we got female, right. we got my wife. You know, 
So every man, so you name it, we came out. I even got a Puerto Rican working with us. You know, okay. when I was out there and I, and I promoted the fight over in Cancun, Mexico, with Warrior, um, I had me interpreter out there with me. So right. whenever Malin would say something in Spanish, I would know what he was saying. Right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, we have so, a guy we call, I call him LL because he called himself the Lord of License, Michael Gilbert. He's actually a Jew. Okay. All yeah, right. yeah, he's a part of K9 Boston Gold Promotion. We have Michael Jamar. Michael Jamar, he is, um, he's a um, designer. He actually used to work for Walt Disney. He used to design for them. Okay, sounds like you got a pretty big team rolling behind you. Oh, man, that, that's why you got to get the biggest and best fight there is out here. And not just, you know, not we looking to make relationships, man, have relationships with, you know, with, with people, man, you know, and do big things. I'm I'm trying to prepare myself for the 13th round. Okay, I'm okay. Be at the end of boxing, it's just over with, you know. Now I'm, I'm going to have that suitcase and have on a suit and tie. Right, And right. we have to fight for more than right. I talking about just no local stuff. I'm right. talking about globally. Right. Yeah, but uh, my, my CEO, I mean, my COO, Bill Waller, you got to talk to him too, Sean. He can fill you in on a lot of a lot of things that we are doing because, I, like I said, he's running the company. Okay. I'm the CEO of the company, but he's the CEO of the company. Right. He, you know, he's, he's working on a deal. Actually, I think it's in Dubai. We can start promoting shows over in Dubai. Oh, wow. A lot of things he's doing, a lot of names, you know, of the cities, I, I really can't even pronounce them, you know right. what I mean? But right. He's working, man. We just got off the phone. I just got off the phone with him. Actually, the headquarters is out where his office is at. It's in Vegas. Okay. So he, when it, you know, when... he, he, I'm sorry, go ahead. So he, he, no, I was going to say, he feels me on a lot of stuff that's going on in Vegas, you know, like how how to, how to, um, tickets and stuff are sold out as far as the Mayweather fight. At what, what, like an hour or, or 20, 30 minutes? Uh -huh. he, he knew about that. He knew about that before they actually hit the internet because he stayed in Vegas. Right, right. So, you know, we well, everywhere, man. Well, <laughs> we well, K9, well, well, since you can't really tell us right now who the opponent is or what's yeah. playing, can you at least give us a time frame of when you expect to be back in the ring? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll start to be, um, it, it'll definitely be, um, hmm. By at least June, it'd July, be, sometime this summer. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be yeah, probably in June, probably in June. It, it, it'd definitely be before my mandatory. Okay, you know, I okay. See my, I see, I see that my um the guy who's a mandatory was just I don't know if it's your boy because y'all both stay in Houston, but um I see he's actually fighting for his um uh a tuna fight I guess on uh, March twenty eighth. So you know it, it would definitely be right for me to get me a tuna fight in and. You know, just stay busy. You know, gotta stay busy. You know what I'm saying? Brush the right. dirt off my shoulders. You know. <laughs> right. And then, when I mean, I says K9. Yeah. So what happened was, you know, we had, uh, you know, the Cold War between Oscar and Bob M, and we saw recently yeah. that they buried a hatchet and and they're working together now. But on the flip yeah. side, it seemed like Al Heyman has isolated himself from everybody and just doing his own thing all the way over in right field. What, how do you feel as far as especially being a promoter, a businessman, how do you feel about Al Heyman having NBC, Spike TV, taking over some of the ESPN fights and, and doing online streaming of fights? And it seems like he's just snatching up, monopolizing the market. Is that good for boxing or is it bad to stay alienated from the other promoters like that? Uh, I know if it's not hurting boxing and it's hurting boxing, it's actually good for boxing because – you know, boxing would be everywhere. You know, if you're not watching it on HBO, because HBO has other things they're doing. Showtime has other things they're doing. They're putting on boxing shows. They're putting on, you know, Showtime's doing UFC fights. Uh, HBO is putting on movies, you know, cartoons, all kind of stuff is coming on. So every time you look up, you see a fight. That's good for boxing. Uh, NBC, ABC, ESPN2, Spike, BT, HBO, Showtime, ESPN2, UK. Oh, man, they don't do nothing but get boxing back to where it is. I actually believe that boxing would be bigger this year than it's ever been ever with the Mayweather fighting the, um, the Pacquiao, with, um, with, 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 um, the, 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 the K9s fighting, um, soon to be, I'll let you know real soon, with the Kirkland. <laughs> And the Canelo, yeah. With the, I mean, you could just go on and go on and go on for days. Andy Lee, Kid Chocolate, you know, Andy Lee was like some good work for me, man. I mean, that guy actually helped me to get ready for Southpaw, and right. he he's a dangerous fighter, man. You know, he 
that back a fight, man. So that's gonna be a good fight. You got the um the Andrea Bonners and the Molina and the, mm-hmm. the Garcia and Peterson. Yeah, and I mean, then you got the Thurman, then we got the Thurman, the Thurman, Robert the Ghost Carrera. That's gonna be a good fight too. That's gonna be a good fight too, yeah. You got man, you got man, I'm telling you, boxing will be this is the biggest year in boxing history. I mean, even to me bigger than even the Muhammad Ali days. Well, well, let me, days well, let me ask this, K9, with, with your promotional company. So let me put this out. We know Al Heyman acts as an advisor slash sometimes manager. And the only yeah. way he's able to put on these fights is he used people like Lou DiBella and and, Dan, yeah. and and the Goose and Tudor and Warriors Box and all that. Would you be open yeah. uh, to working with Al Heyman? Because he needs a promoter to put on the show. I mean, would would you be exactly. open to work with Al Heyman and, and getting you and your fighters and his fighters on NBC and Spike TV and all that? Or I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this, I'm not beefing with no one, so I'm open, you know, to 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 talk to to, to people to see, you know, see see what we can come up with. Like I say, like that that department, you know, what I mean, even though I'm the CEO of my company, I would let you know my my um, COO of the company, you know, work right. that out because he, he you know he's like a negotiator. And he he negotiates. He, well, he's not like a negotiator. He is a negotiator. He actually negotiated the nine, the biggest nine heavyweight world championship fight on HBO of all time. When um when um Aaron Pryor fought against Alex uh, Aguilera, Alexis Aguilera. Mm-hmm. So I got I got man, I got a lot of lot of experience, you know, um, with my team. And um, you know, he he did the biggest show with uh, Bob Aaron, with Bob Aaron, with the um. With with Alexis Aguilera and um, Aaron Pryor, and get a Julio C. Chavez versus Hector Camacho. I might be getting mixed up on which one was the biggest fight, but he did both of them. Right, right. So yeah, I mean, we are talking about what twenty years ago. So right, you know, well, I, well, I, I believe yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, now let me ask this. You know, being you from from out of out there in Detroit, and out there in Michigan as a whole. So right now we see besides yourself. The the Rail brothers are making some noise. One of them has the belt. The other one's gonna be yeah. fighting soon. So so, what are your yeah. thoughts on on the Darrell brothers? Are they getting to that point where, um, you know, we're gonna start seeing a lot? They're really gonna really shake up and make a lot, lot of noise at super metal weight, being a day from up there in your area. Um, you know what? Um, you know what? I I you know what? I, they they both good fighters. I don't know what kind of noise they're gonna make, but I know they both good fighters, and I can see both of them becoming world champions. But like far as noise and noise, I don't you know, it, it depends on like who you fight, you know what I mean, who's out there to fight. You know, you you want the biggest fight possible for the most money. I mean, if they fight against, you know, who is he Chavez Junior, I don't know if them two gonna ever fight, you know, Darrell and him or if Frosch gonna fight him or Frosch gonna fight Andre Ward. It depends on who they fight, you know, because you can have you can, you know, defend the belt. You know, but then if you defend the belt and don't make no money, it's like, okay, I'm defending the belt, but I ain't make no money. The first time around when I fought and I had and I was a world champion the first time, I made some money, but I didn't make the money that, that I'm going to make this time around. Right. So it really depends on, you know, who who you fight. I mean, you have to look at um, you have to look at who Al Hamey has, you know, in his stable in the super middleweight division. And that that's kind of like one of the reasons why, you know, I wouldn't, um, I would I would um have uh like uh Al Heyman like advise me because first of all I have an advisor because they reached out to me I have an advisor of course they're not promoting so you know they wouldn't try to promote me but they probably would try to have somebody else promote me which you can't do that because I have my own promotion so right. it wasn't that it was you know it wasn't that I think I'm this and that you know what I mean because I'm a Christian and I'm humble but it's just that you know I I'm, I'm situated you know what I, you know, who gonna pay me more than me. Right. Who gonna right. do more for me than me? So that's right. why you know that's why I come with even with Golden Boy. Like when when um when um I went and fought for the number one spot, you know Golden Boy they wanted to sign me up, and um I I didn't sign because I wanted to do my own thing. You know, it wasn't no beef for Golden Boy or nothing. It wasn't no beef. It's no beef with Al Hamid. It's no beef for no one. But I'm trying to prepare myself for a 13th round. Right. You, know, like you can't fight forever. You know what I mean? You can't fight forever. And um, I just want to be ready when I do retire, hand the gloves up, you know, that um, I will still be in boxing. I just dedicated my life, and I did a whole lot for the sport of boxing. I mean, if it wasn't for the contender that I was on, season two, mm-hmm. boxing, 
boxing would have as many fans as they have now. I brought a lot of fans to boxing. Me and the guys on season one, season two, season three, all the seasons. It would be no 24-7 if it wasn't for the contender. It wouldn't be no Boxino. It wouldn't be no um, no no Super 6. No, right. 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 So the contender opened up the door for a lot of things. I mean, a- ABC or the NBC, that, the last time NBC or, or was that, yeah, NBC was on TV, it was the contender. Channel right. 7. Right. Yeah, so, you know, and it's okay. they about to do it again. But, um, you know, I'm just in a good place, man, Shine, a good place. And I'm finally, I'm thankful, man, that, you know, to know that, you know, God don't make no, mistake, no mistakes. I'm happy, man. You see how the, right. the bill came back to me like a boomerang? Uh-huh. And, 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 and now I got my own promotions. Got my shoe. My shoe should be out probably uh, before the end of this year. Okay. I mean, it's just, it's, 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 it's good being K-9 right now. Right, right. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, yeah, since, yeah. since earlier we 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 touched a little bit on you touched a little bit on Mayweather Pack is going to fight. So give give us your thoughts on that fight, man. Is it too late or is it just the right time? What what are your thoughts on the fight? Who's going to win that? Hey, well, you know what? It's definitely not too late because if they would have fought five years ago, maybe it would have been a better fight. But they would have made the kind of money they're making now. Right. And you know, and you know, as a, a, a being a guy, you know, it's very important to be patient. And them right. being patient, even though they probably were forced to be patient, or they, they just being patient because they didn't want to play good at the time because, you know, because of the business part, you never know. The teams probably didn't get along, or they probably one thought the other one was on drugs. And both of them was, was real big back then. So right. it's like one wouldn't give, and the other wouldn't give either. Right. You know, but then, you know, with, with Pacquiao losing his first fight, I mean, well, losing against my cares, you know what I mean? Right. I guess he decided, and being a Christian now, too, I guess he decided to say, okay, I give, because if I don't give, you you ain't going to give. You know what I mean? And you right. never lost. You know what I mean? So, well, let's go ahead and make the, make the fight. You know what I mean? And then, I mean, it's going to be a, 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 I tell you, the event for sure is going to be off the hook, off the chain. You know what I mean? Right. And I hope the security is there, man, because I don't trust them parents uh, with, with something that big. Right. So that's big. You know what I mean? So I hope the security is off the hook when it comes to that fight. Right. Um, it's hard to predict who I think will win because if you notice, Mike Tyson, when Mike Tyson fought, right before he fought against the Buster Douglas, he had got dropped in the gym. So, you know, the streets be talking. We don't know what's going to happen in training camp. What, what if Mayweather get dropped in the gym? What if Pacquiao get dropped in the gym? The streets might talk about that before the fight get made. So you be them bet for the fight, bet on the fight, or say who you think going to win. Right. Like somebody done got hurt in the gym. You know what I mean? You know, he's going to say who you going to Now, you can't, you can't say, well, no, I don't want to bet. No, man, a guy might shoot you or kill you. Right. That's why I don't bet anyway. But I always, you know, the big fight like that, I like to wait until they, the two both guys are in the ring before I say who well, I think going to win because you might see it might be a, a cut that's just not going away on a person's face. And the other right. guy, other fighter might see that. Mayweather might see Pacquiao had a cut. Or Pacquiao might see that May- Mayweather had a cut. They're not going to cancel the fight on, on, a, on because of a cut. They're going to try to do whatever they can to try to heal it. See what I'm saying? Right. But now you're not going to see that and start charging that. And now, you know, you see what happened when Mayweather yeah. was bleeding for the first time. Right. You know what? And, and you brought up a point that I was, I was just about to ask you, and you, you just touched on it a little bit. A fight of this magnitude, a fight that's this big, if you're not 100% a couple of weeks going into the fight, do you risk going into the biggest fight ever in boxing history not being 100% or do you just push it back a couple of weeks and say, hey, we're still fighting, just let's push it back in two or three weeks. You can keep your tickets. You can still come out. We'll get the hotels to recop your dates and all that. With a fight like this, if you weren't 100%, would you risk going all the way or do you want to be 100% in a fight of this magnitude? I think I think your risk going all the way. Your risk going all the way because within that two three weeks anything can happen. So you know you you just should be careful. You won't believe in no superstitions and thinking that this could happen or that could happen. You won't think that because you saw a black cat that you're gonna actually get cut. You know what I mean? Or fall in your face or something. So right. you know, you'll make sure. I guess if they believe in superstitions, they won't cross poles in that. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think that they you know they just I had the same training camp they normally had. You know. But they, you know, they they smart enough to know how much work they need to get. They smart enough to to, to know what what, what head gear they need to wear. You know, they smart enough to know like who they need to smart. So I don't think nothing crazy is going to happen. But I'm saying anything can happen. Nothing's perfect in this world, but God. Right. 
Well, can I? I don't okay. think Peck. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say I don't think Peck y'all is playing basketball anymore right now either. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hope not. <laughs> you know, exactly. you, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, being that you're the 154 pound division, um, a lot of a lot of y'all have been around for a while. 154 pound division. We have some nice young and upcomers, people that's coming up. What are your thoughts on um, the young 154 pounders like Errol Spencer's and Julian J. Rock Williams? What do you think about these young cats coming up? Do you think they're the future of boxing? You know what? Those young guys, man, those young guys are going to be all right, man. I, I can tell you the future of boxing is, um, is, is heading in the right direction because you got a lot of young up-and-coming fighters. Like even like the guy from um from my city, Detroit, who's actually fighting on ESPN too um this Friday. Tony Harrison. Uh, Tony Harrison. Yeah, he's a good fighter. So boxing is not going nowhere no time soon. And like 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 the Spencers and the Julian Williams and um Harrison and even another fighter from Detroit. You know you can't you can't talk boxing and leave Detroit out there. You got Dominique Dawson. You know he's mm-hmm. another good fighter from the city of Detroit. A junior middleweight. You know and um. Right. So yeah, yeah, the division is, is in good hands. It's in good hands. Even even um the Chawa brothers, even the Chawa brothers, you know, they some good fighters too, you know, and you know so and they're young. So even if you know they take a L, you know, they can come, they could come back from that being twenty two, twenty three. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you right. boxing is in, you know, in the future of boxing man, is man definitely is bright, real bright. I'm talking about bright right. like that snow outside. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, I'll yeah. tell you, I tell you what, kid. Now we're looking forward to seeing you back in the ring soon, uh, brother. I know you're going to keep us posted once you hear something uh, what's coming out. Uh, hopefully, boxing and social will be the first one to break the news. So we'll be waiting on pins and needles. And uh, what, 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 what do you want to say? Don't be, don't be a stranger. Listen, <laughs> you don't be a stranger, man, because I understand. Because now, look, when I now now when I didn't have a belt, you was writing everything for uh-huh. me and about me. <laughs> <laughs> and when I get the bill, you just stop calling, stop texting, everything. So I'm like, man, that's that's opposite, you know. Oh yeah, and yeah. She, you know, you know what I'm saying. A set case of shoes, she go, she gonna get with you when you got it, you know what I mean? Yeah, she, yeah. She, you know, I'm just talking about like I'm just using as an example. You right, know, right. Got it, she, you know, you know, you know, you know, I'm saying, you know, you're, you're the game wise. Yeah. You know, knowledge wise or you was like like, Well, he disappeared like man, you know? Right. But I tell you this much, man, what 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 they make no sense to me is Grady Brewer told me one time. Me and Grady Brewer was pretty cool, man. I'm talking about we was real cool. Uh-huh. And um, you know, once I became world champion, he stopped calling me and I, I called him, I said, Man, you know, what's happening, man? You know, you ain't right. hit your brother up. Right. He said, Man, um he said, I thought you was too big, man, for me. You know, you I'm like, Huh? <laughs> man, I'm real. I say, if we boys, we boys, we brothers, we brothers, right. man. You know, money don't change me. You know what I mean? People change. Right, right, so, exactly. Yeah, so. All right, well, K-9, what, but, um, what, do you, what do you want to say to your fans and all that in closing? What do you want to tell the boxing world? Uh, man, I, I just want to tell them um, to stay tuned, you know. Um, definitely stay tuned, man. K-9, boxing, whole p- promotions. Man, y'all gonna be surprised at the things that we do. You know what I mean? With God's help, man. Um, they can reach me um, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at K Nine Boxing. Um, raise when you get to the top, don't stop there. Raise the roof and go farther. Right, right. There you have it, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Cornelius K Nine Bundrets got his promotional company. Uh, his sneakers are coming out towards the end of the year. And, you know, on top of that, he's going to have a big announcement for his fight coming up soon. He's willing to work with these other promoters. There's a lot coming out. K-9, thanks for being on the show, buddy. Oh, man, thanks, Sean. Jesus Christ, my dog. Stay in touch my brother. Oh, 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 oh.